folks, it's Dr. Newman here. Maybe you know me from my social studies videos. Uh, those have been out for a while on the channel. If you're not familiar with them, just, just, just look around on the channel. There's a whole bunch of them. They'll help you for the social studies part of the course subjects. This is about science. I've been wanting to do science for a while. It's just taken me a while to get them out, but I'm really happy that uh, I'm able to finally start releasing these videos for y'all. Um, and this is just a little introduction about that. Uh, how's it gonna work? The TEKS are divided into four sections, matter and energy, force, energy, motion, earth and space, and organisms, and the environment. There's gonna be about, oh, six, seven, eight, something like that, maybe more videos in each uh, section. We're starting with this one, with this first one, matter and uh, matter and energy. Now, I'm gonna focus just on content, just like I did in the social studies, focused on content. Here, I'm gonna focus on content. Uh, why? Because if you're strong in the content, your chances of passing the test will go way, way up. Even if you get a question that's about teaching, you're still gonna to have to know the content so you can think of the, the assessment method or the materials that you'll have to use or the, the teaching strategy or whatever it is. So that's why we're gonna focus on content. And I really wanna know how this works, what y'all think of this. There will be a course at some point on Udemy, there'll be a link for it. Uh, I don't have the course yet. Right now we're just, I just have the videos on, on YouTube and maybe one of these days I'll have a course. But I, I want your feedback, so put it in the comments. If there's a topic, maybe you've taken the exam, the science, and uh, there's a topic that uh, you have a specific question about or something that you specifically want me to cover that, that you don't see, it'll take several weeks for me to get all these out. But uh, in the meantime, let me know. Let me know how it goes for you, okay? Um, and, and, and if there's something I need to address, uh, if it's a simple question, I'll answer the question. If it's uh, something I can put in a video, I will do my best to uh, you know see how that fits in the plants um, and that's it that's all I have to tell you um, we're starting with matter and energy let's go ahead and get started so the first thing that we're going to cover is these four qualities you'll see them here a big emphasis on in the teaks is classifying matter classifying substances and and one way that the teaks uh, spell it out is by mass, volume, weight, and density. So we need to know what these things are, uh, what their definitions are, and how they relate to each other, all right? That's the first thing we need to know. Uh, mass, here's a definition. The amount of matter in an object. So what does that mean? Let's look at some balls here. We got a little wiffle ball, kind of like a wiffle ball. It's a, I don't know, it's a practice ball if you play golf. And a real golf ball. And one of my kids, Dory or Nemo, you know, I don't remember. Um, little play balls here, right? So which of these has the most mass? Is it this big one? Is it one of these two? These are about the same size, but you can tell that this one is, is hollow, right? It's empty, and this is just a regular golf ball, right? So which one of these has the most mass? This is the biggest one. This one seems to be the heaviest one, and we can probably assume that it's not the hollow practice ball, right? We can just throw that one out, because that one's empty. Because it's the most mass, so what about these two? Well, is it the one that's the biggest or the one that seems the heaviest? This one, the golf ball seems a little bit heavier. Let's hold on to that thought before we answer the question, all right? Put these down. So let's put another definition up. Volume. The amount of space an object takes up. Well, if we look at our Dory 
Nemo, which one, our, our practice, our little play ball here, takes up a lot more space than these do, so the volume is gonna be a lot bigger, right? Well, that's pretty easy. Let's keep going. Wait. Okay, here's a long one. The relationship between gravity, gravity, hold on, on an object or the force of gravity on an object, whatever planetary body the object is on. So wait, hold on a second. So weight isn't just pounds I get on the scale and I weigh X number of pounds or X number of kilos. No, because weight is, is it has to do with the pull of gravity on us wherever we're standing. So let's say we're standing on the earth or we're standing on the moon or on Mars, all right? Let's say that. So, and I'll put it over here. All right, so weight is measured by scientists in Newtons, named after Isaac Newton, right? Now, this is not gonna be on your test, probably. Newton's is not gonna be on the test, but it's interesting to know because gravity is a force, right? Here, between the force of gravity on an object and forces are measured in Newton's, regardless of what kind of force it is, if we're gonna measure it, well, let's say most forces, maybe all forces, are measured in Newton's. And there's a relationship, of course, between Newton's and pounds and kilograms, you don't have to worry about what that is. Just know that that's kind of similar, okay? Measuring in Newtons. And let's say that, uh, that I am standing on, we're just a person. And this is on Earth. And that person equals 150 pounds. Yes, I'm using pounds and not Newtons. I just want you to know what it's called. I don't want it to get too confusing. Weighing 150 pounds. Well. What, how much do I weigh on the moon? That same person on the moon. Same person weighs 25 pounds on the moon. If, I, if that person's on Mars, that person's gonna weigh 57 pounds. What if the person's on Jupiter? Now, you can't actually stand on Jupiter, of course, but say you could. On Jupiter. How much is Jupiter? 355 pounds. Why the change? Because the pull of gravity, the force of gravity, is, is, is different on each of these uh, bodies here, these planetary bodies. So if Earth is our constant because we live on Earth, 150 pounds, much less on the moon, not quite as much less on Mars, and Jupiter is massive. It, it has a big mass and a big volume, and it's huge, 355 pounds, so the pull of gravity is a lot bigger, so the weight is a lot heavier on Jupiter. Now, what if this golf ball, say we were on the moon, and, and I just threw this golf ball out into space, is it still gonna have mass? If it's just floating through space, is it still gonna have mass? Yes, because the amount of matter is constant. That hasn't changed any. I haven't got a knife and scooped out any mass. Is it still gonna have volume? Yes, that's not gonna change either. What about the weight? Is that gonna change? Yes, it's not gonna have any weight because there's no, it's not on a body. There's no gravity pulling down on it. It's just out in space. 
So here, in this case, if it's just out in space, or if this person was out in space, just floating, there would be no weight. So what about our last one? We have density. Compares. An object's mass with its volume. Now, mass and density are really closely related. So let's look at these balls again. Which one's more dense? So it's how much mass is in an object, but also how much mass is in for density, how much mass is packed in is, is related to volume. What do you think? What's the answer? That one's more dense, of course, right? Because it's pretty, it's heavier and it's smaller, even though it's not a whole lot heavier, I guess. It's kind of hard to tell just by feeling it, but it's smaller. So more mass is packed into the golf ball than the play ball, right? So there's a formula that you might need to know. And it is density, right here, density equals mass divided by volume. So, if other conditions stay the same, like temperature, say, and you have a mass of lead or uh, gold or something like that, the density is not gonna change if, if we have just a little bit or if we have a lot, all right? So that's good to know, we need to remember that. If this, say this golf ball was, I don't know, uh, ice, and, and ice has a certain density, and the density stays constant. If, if, as long as all other conditions have stayed the same, if temperature, especially with ice, if temperature has stayed the same, so none of it has melted, okay? And assuming that all other conditions, such as temperature, stay the same, if I have a little piece of ice or a really big piece of ice, the density is going to be constant. Now, how else uh, does this relate into teaks? We need to know that uh, it's connected to sinking and floating. That's also in the teaks uh, substance's ability to sink and to float. And the simple thing is that uh, less, dis less dense substances float on top of more dense substances, right? So oil floats on top of water because oil is less dense than water. And that's it. Simple to start with. I think that's all you need to know about those four concepts.